The hum stops first. You don't notice it immediately because your mind fills the gap with expectation, waiting for the refrigerator to cycle back on, for the heating system to resume its steady breath. But the silence spreads like water finding cracks, seeping into spaces that were never meant to be quiet. The house breathes slower now. So do you. You wait. You listen. You hope it's temporary. Outside, streetlights flicker once and go dark, leaving only the pale glow of your phone screen to illuminate the growing realization that something fundamental has shifted. The familiar weight of electricity, that invisible current that powered your certainty, has vanished. And in that absence, the world feels older than you remember. What you're experiencing has already happened more than once. The patterns are documented, studied, mapped across decades of human response to sudden system failure. But the real breakdown isn't outside. It's the quiet moment when denial ends and your brain begins calculating how long the warmth will last. The first rule of survival isn't about fire or water or shelter. It's about the 60 seconds when your mind decides whether to adapt or wait for rescue. Research shows that in those crucial moments, only 15% of people exhibit the survival qualities needed to overcome serious circumstances. The rest enter what psychologists call behavioral paralysis a cognitive state where familiar responses fail and new ones refuse to form. You notice the pattern too. Temperature drops two degrees every hour once the heating stops. Your breath begins to mist near the windows where cold seeps through glass like a slow creep. The refrigerator, now silent, becomes a timer counting down to spoilage. Each degree lost narrows your margin for error. Yet most people spend these precious early hours searching for explanations instead of solutions. The science reveals something beautiful and brutal about human nature. When faced with sudden environmental change, our brains prioritize understanding over action. We need to know why before we can accept what. This cognitive delay, this pause between recognition and response, determines who adapts and who becomes a statistic in future analyses in the growing database of preventable tragedies. But that's not what really breaks first. Your core body temperature begins its descent before you feel cold. The human thermostat operates within a narrow range, maintaining 98.6 degrees through an intricate dance of circulation and metabolism. When that external support system fails, your body starts making calculations. Blood retreats from extremities. Metabolism slows. The biological machinery of warmth conservation activates protocols older than civilization. The time frames are unforgiving. Three hours without adequate shelter and harsh conditions before hypothermia begins its effect. Three days without water before dehydration compromises judgment. Three weeks without food before the body begins consuming stored reserves. These numbers aren't suggestions. They're the mathematics of human limits, equations written in the language of physics and biology that govern every human body regardless of preparation or denial. You wait for warmth that isn't coming. History teaches through repetition. The Texas freeze of February 2021. The New England blizzard of 1978. The European heat wave of 2003. Each event follows the same psychological trajectory. Initial confusion gives way to improvisation, which yields to either adaptation or surrender. Those who survive share common behavioral patterns that emerge independent of background, education, or previous experience. The survivors consolidate space. They gather in the smallest defensible area, usually a single room that can be heated by body warmth alone. They layer materials, understanding intuitively that dead air trapped between barriers becomes insulation. They share resources and warmth, overriding social conditioning that prizes independence over interdependence. The numbers reveal a pattern we all follow, even now. Disaster psychology research identifies specific cognitive stages that unfold with mechanical precision. First comes the startle response, lasting seconds to minutes. Then the denial phase, where the mind rejects new reality in favor of familiar expectations. Next arrives the bargaining period characterized by attempts to restore normal function through increasingly strained measures. Only after these stages do most people enter the adaptation phase, where survival behaviors finally emerge. But for many, adaptation arrives too late. The window for effective response closes while the mind processes shock, 
core temperature drops below 95 degrees and cognitive function degrades, decision making becomes impaired precisely when clear thinking matters most. The brain, operating on reduced energy, begins shutting down non-essential processes, including the complex reasoning needed for creative problem solving. The danger isn't outside, it's in how long you wait. Professional survival instructors teach a counterintuitive principle. The best time to implement emergency protocols is before emergency conditions fully manifest, while systems still function partially, while resources remain accessible, while cognitive capacity operates at full strength. This preventive approach contradicts natural human tendency to hope for restoration rather than prepare for degradation. The psychological research reveals why preparation feels so unnatural. Human cognition evolved for pattern recognition based on past experience. We excel at identifying familiar threats but struggle with novel challenges that fall outside our experiential database. A power grid failure in winter combines multiple unfamiliar elements, creating a compound emergency that exceeds most people's cognitive models for appropriate response. You don't notice it yet, but your instincts have already decided. Somewhere beneath conscious awareness, ancient protocols activate. Your ancestors survived ice ages, famines, plagues, and countless disasters that would seem impossible to modern sensibilities. Their genetic legacy includes stress responses, metabolic adaptations, and behavioral patterns that emerge automatically under extreme conditions. The body knows how to conserve energy, how to process fear into action, how to make critical decisions with incomplete information. The key lies in recognizing these responses rather than fighting them. When your hands grow cold, blood has retreated to protect vital organs. When your appetite decreases, metabolism has shifted to conservation mode. When your thoughts become hyper aware of immediate surroundings, attention is narrowed to survival relevant information. These changes aren't symptoms of weakness. They're evidence of sophisticated biological engineering. Then something ancient inside you wakes up. Human survival is an individual. It's collective. The strongest predictor of disaster survival isn't physical fitness, emergency supplies, or technical knowledge. It's social connection. People who maintain communication with neighbors, who share resources and information, who coordinate responses rather than compete for advantage, demonstrate significantly higher survival rates across all categories of emergency. This social dimension explains why some communities emerge stronger from disasters while others fragment. Shared hardship can either isolate people in individual struggle or unite them in collective adaptation. The difference lies in communication patterns established before crisis arrives. Networks of mutual support, even informal ones, provide psychological stability that enables clear thinking under pressure. The structure fails first, but not the species. Human beings possess remarkable adaptive capacity that emerges under conditions of genuine necessity. When familiar systems collapse, creativity expands. When normal resources become unavailable, innovation accelerates. When individual solutions prove inadequate, cooperation deepens. These responses aren't learned behaviors. They're expressions of fundamental human nature that modern comfort has temporarily obscured. But awareness is the only shelter that never fails. The temperature drops two degrees every hour once the heating stops. Your breath begins to mist near the windows where cold seeps through glass like a slow creep. The mathematics of survival limits begin their quiet calculation. Equations written in the language of physics and biology that govern every human body, regardless of preparation or denial. You don't notice it yet, but your instincts have already decided. Somewhere beneath conscious awareness, ancient protocols activate. Your ancestors survived ice ages, famines, plagues, and countless disasters that would seem impossible to modern sensibilities. Their genetic legacy includes stress responses, metabolic adaptations, and behavioral patterns that emerge automatically under extreme conditions. But awareness takes time to surface. Research reveals that disaster survivors experience an average of 21 different psychological reactions during crisis events. 
cognitive overload floods the mind with sensory information that exceeds normal processing capacity. Some describe feeling like they might burst under the weight of competing stimuli. Others report being submerged by an avalanche of emotions while their brain goes into overdrive. The danger isn't the cold. It's the delay between recognition and response. Human cognition evolved for pattern recognition based on past experience. We excel at identifying familiar threats, but struggle with novel challenges that fall outside our experiential database. A power grid failure in winter combines multiple unfamiliar elements, creating a compound emergency that exceeds most people's cognitive models for appropriate response. The psychological stages unfold with mechanical precision. First comes a startle response, lasting seconds to minutes. Then the denial phase, where the mind rejects new reality in favor of familiar expectations. Next arrives the bargaining period, characterized by attempts to restore normal function through increasingly urgent measures. You listen again, the silence has a shape now. Only after these stages do most people enter the adaptation phase, where survival behaviors finally emerge. But for many, adaptation arrives too late. The window for effective response closes while the mind processes shock. Core temperature drops below 95 degrees and cognitive function degrades precisely when clear thinking matters most. Professional survival instructors teach a counterintuitive principle. The best time to implement emergency protocols is before emergency conditions fully manifest. While systems still function partially, while resources remain accessible, while cognitive capacity operates at full strength, this preventive approach contradicts natural human tendency to hope for restoration rather than prepare for degradation. The ancient protocols have been running all along. In the phone's fading glow, the room turns silver blue, cold but somehow aware. You understand now that the 15 core rules aren't warnings but recognitions of what we already carry inside us. The mathematics of human limits, the three minute windows, the psychology of denial, these are maps drawn by millions who face the same choices you face in this moment. When the hum returns, it doesn't sound like safety, it sounds like memory. The refrigerator cycles back to life, the heating system resumes its steady breath, but something has changed in you. You've touched the edge of the algorithm that governs all human response to crisis. You've felt the weight of ancient wisdom activating in your blood. The structure fails first, but not the species. We're all built to adapt when adaptation becomes the only choice. Awareness remains the only shelter that never collapses, the only warmth that doesn't depend on power grids or familiar systems, or the illusion that comfort lasts forever. If everything fell tonight, you would discover what your ancestors always knew. That survival isn't about the tools you gather or the preparations you make. It's about the speed at which you let go of what was and embrace what is. The deeper truth is also the beautiful one. We are already equipped for whatever comes next. This story studies survival behavior and disaster psychology for what it reveals about the human mind. Everything falls, awareness remains,